going on, everybody? Good morning. NBA season is finally back. All-Star break is over. We have seven games to look at for tonight. I am itching for NBA to be back. I'm also um, kind of glad that we had some time off just to reset our minds a little bit, relax a bit. I've been getting more involved in sports betting the last week or so just because I'm in PA. And um, last night, we actually hit a banger nine-team parlay for college basketball, which I posted on Twitter. So if you're into any sort of sports betting or obviously DFS, prize pick stuff, follow me on Twitter. I post my picks for free right now. You know, don't have any Discord or anything like that for sports betting. Uh, just trying to keep it going, trying to keep uh, keep winning, obviously. And that was awesome. I didn't watch the whole all the games because, you know, it's six six thirty. I woke up today, so I'm not gonna try to stay up until like midnight watching college basketball. But uh, glad that woke up. It's always good to hit something like that in the morning and see it. So let's get into today's picks. As always, enjoy the if you enjoy the videos, hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, obviously, for our updates at the DFS Process. Check out the website if you want to join us at DFSProcess.net. And you can check out Price Picks. Use my code PROCESS. I post my Price Picks stuff for free on Twitter. And I'll get a five-pick flex that I post. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the slate. We got some news. We weren't. Ex I wasn't expecting to have this much news to talk about the first day back from the break. But a couple of these teams, uh, at least a couple of players, are out today. So that's going to affect these teams. Chris Paul is out six to eight weeks with his thumb issue. That's going to be very huge for the Phoenix Suns. We've already gotten the sample size without Chris Paul um, just because he's missed some time since he's been with the Suns. So we kind of know exactly who to go to. <clears throat> Devin Booker is going to be a great play. Cough, cough. But looking at the point guard picks, some other guys at the top end. You know, If you wanted to pay over 10 k for John Moran or Curry, you could. Curry, maybe he carries that hot shooting into this first game. But 10-2 is a big price tag on him. 10-4 is a big price tag on John Moran. So... Now, Trey Young has been playing a lot better without John Collins. Only had to play 25 minutes last game because they were up by 21 or 20, yeah, 21 or something. They're up by like 30 at one point against the Magic, so he didn't have to play the fourth quarter. Should go back to playing a full workload against the Bulls today. 8K range, you have SGA back. They're missing a couple of other like Dort is out, a couple of other role players are out, Ty Jerome, etc. So you know, SGA should get a good amount of usage in his first game back. I haven't heard of anything any sort of minutes limit or anything like that. It's not an easy matchup going up against the Suns, even without Chris Paul. They're still a very good defensive team, thanks to Bridges, thanks to Aiton's been pretty good defensively so far this year, and you know, Crowder and all those guys play tough defensively. But uh, I don't know if I want to go with SGA in his first game back. It's just going to hurt Josh Giddy a bit, less ball handling for him. He's probably not going to get another triple-double with SGA in there as well, at least not this year, definitely going forward he will. Uh, but he really has benefited without SG in terms of just handling the ball and just becoming the true point guard. Uh, I definitely don't mind going down to, like, Simons. It was only $8,100. We've seen him just absolutely erupt since uh, they've gotten rid of CJ McCollum. Just taking a ton of threes, hitting a lot of his shots, getting you a lot of assists as well. It's a high price tag. That's the most expensive he's been. But it's definitely warranted. He's playing monstrous minutes. And there is no Nurkic today, so just one less offensive body for the team. And Nurkic has been playing very well, so that's going to have to be absorbed by the rest of the group that's already playing on limited bodies because Bledsoe is still out. Uh, going with, If you want to go with a more value pick on the Portland side, you can go with Justice Winslow. He's kind of a do-it-all type of guy. been super consistent in terms of just getting you over 30, mid-30s in fantasy points since he's been starting. Uh, that's five straight games now. And I should continue today. He's good defensively. He can handle the ball a little bit as well. So definitely think he looks like a very good value pick at $6,100. We're going to keep getting some better value as we move further down here. Uh, like Davion Mitchell looks decent as just a guy off the bench that can get up to like 30 minutes if he's playing really well shooting the ball. But uh, sometimes the shot's not all. He's also very good defensively if they decide to just have him on some of these uh, guys, some of these guards like Will Barton from Denver. But some guys I'm just not interested in are Troy Mana, 5,000 now that SGA is back. Monty Morris, not too interested in him. Jordan Poole is a pretty much a fade. Uh, yeah, Goodwin at 4,000, but he's kind of been upserved by uh, Rondo the last, well, basically the whole month of February. He's not been really in the rotation except for garbage time. And there's no Garland today. There's also no Karis LeVert for the Cavs. So I'm really thinking that uh, Rondo at $3,900 is going to be a pretty good value pick. Wouldn't be surprised if he starts just because he's been in the rotation, um, and he's been playing very well in some of these games, a couple of 40-point games for him recently, shooting the ball a little bit better, but really, you play him for his assist, his rebounds, 
the defensive stats that he can get you with some steals. Uh, going up against a terrible Detroit team, I definitely think that Rondo can rack up some defensive stats and um, he can rack up some assists as well. At shooting guard, I, mean, I think everybody's going to play Devin Booker. It's tough to argue with that. The matchup is excellent. Um, no Chris Paul gets a nice bump in usage. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets a double-double today. Get some extra minutes if the games are closer just without Chris Paul. And more usage for him, obviously. And he's already been playing at an exceptional level this year in terms of just shooting the basketball and just making plays. He's already taken over 1,000 field goals, and he's shooting almost like 45% from the floor. So he's been having a great season as usual. 88 is not super expensive without Chris Paul, so I will go ahead and put him in. I like him more than Zach Levine. You know, Levine's dealing with DeRozan, dealing with Vooch. Less usage competition for Devin Booker. I like him more than Jalen Brown. Josh Giddey's a fade for me. And then the guys in the 7K range, Edwards and Russell. It's tough to project which one of these three guys on Minnesota will go off. Uh, the matchup is not the best. Minis uh, Memphis is good defensively, but Minnesota plays at a fast pace enough. So I'd probably prefer Edwards over Russell, but it's always tough to pick when they're all healthy. You can also go in the 6K range and just avoid the 7K range if you wanted to. You have Cade Cunningham at only 66. He looks like a pretty good value. Uh, the minutes went back up to 36 last game. So you know, you, when uh, a couple of games that he came back, he was just playing like 27, 22, 21. But got the All-Star break also to rest up. Should be looking at full minutes once again. And matchup is a slower one against Cleveland, but it should be closer now that Cleveland doesn't have Garland and they don't have Levert. Other picks in the 6K range would be like Desmond Bain as a mid-range option. Definitely like Justice Winslow at 61. He's just really affordable. He does a little bit of everything for them, and they're going to need his rebounds today without Nurkic. Other pivots would be, or other plays, would be like 6,000 for Seth Curry. We got word that uh, Brooklyn was probably going to uplift their ban, or New York's going to uplift their ban in the coming weeks about the mask mandate, so we'll see Kyrie finally be able to play in home games. But Bridges, I think he looks like a great play. He's also going to benefit without Chris Paul. He just already plays a ton of minutes, like 40 minutes you can expect in really competitive games against like marquee matchups. I, don't know, I wouldn't expect him to play 40 in this one, but probably like 35 if it's close. Uh, gets you rebounds. He's really good defensively. He's probably going to be on SGA or Josh Giddy, And going to get just more shots off, maybe a little bit more ball handling without uh, Chris Paul, even though he doesn't really handle the ball. But he could get some more assists just running to couple more assists because Chris Paul's, you know, on his best days, he's getting you like 16 or 17 assists. That's definitely going to go around to some of these other guys. So 58 for Bridges, I think he looks like a very nice play. You can go to some of these guys on Atlanta with John Collins doubtful, like Kevin Herter at 46 looks like a pretty fine value pick. Going further down, you see Aaron Holiday most likely start for them. He played 20 minutes when Chris Paul got hurt in the second half. Um, so expect him to start. He's not the the greatest point per minute guy or anything like that but every once in a while he'll come out with like a 25 or 30 point fantasy night and at this price tag he would definitely be viable Wiggins will continue to start and play good minutes just because they don't have too many other bodies right now but I don't know he looks like a decent option but not one that I'm going to go crazy over and that's the main pieces to look at Small forward your top end is Tatum has almost 10k Brown the two guys on Boston who has been playing exceptional basketball recently going into Brooklyn, but they should be able to win without uh, without Brooklyn missing their key guys today. $7,200 for Josh Hart. Looks expensive, but he's already a very good rebounder. Looking back at his days from the Pelicans, they're going to need some of that today and going forward without Nurkic. So him and Winslow get a bump just in terms of rebounding. You could play him on power forward, but I definitely would prefer Winslow saving $1,100 to Josh Hart. Do you have some other pivots that you can look to? Like Kevin Love, will, he's typically always done well when Garland has missed, just um, getting more usage off the bench as a six-man. Uh, but Markkanen is also going to play today, so you'll see. Just have another big that they can play out there. But Markkanen's missed so much time, I'm not sure how many minutes he'll play. He's not interesting to me at all at 58 on DraftKings, but he looks better on FanDuel. i probably look to Aaron Gordon over Markkanen, given how good of a matchup it is against Sacramento, and his price tag is very reasonable. And then going in the 4K range, bottom end, you have Pukovsky. You'll probably see some decent run today. Kim Johnson looks good. Uh, just not having a couple of their guys from Phoenix. Just less ro less bodies in the rotation. More minutes for guys like Cam Johnson. And that's the main piece. So you could look like Bagley if you wanted to punt with somebody at 34 who probably play like 20 minutes or so. But that's like a GPP play. 
At center, you have a lot to talk about here. Well, actually, I think I skipped power forward. Yeah, power forward, you have DeRozan at your top end at 10-7. I touched on some of these guys here. Uh, right now, power forward, I'm, I'm going to leave it open, but I wouldn't mind going down to like Cam Johnson here or going all the way down here if I needed to go to some of these guys in the 3K range. If I did want to pay up at the position, I'd probably look to maybe some of these guys on... You could look to Kevin Love at 62 um, or go up to like Sabonis or somebody like that, but I'll leave it open for now. At center, we have almost like we have so much money left over that we can pay up for a superstar. Uh, Jokic looks excellent today. Pay up for two superstars, Jokic and Devin Booker, if you wanted to. Jokic got some extra time to rest without uh, just with the All Star break, uh, like all these guys did. And um, he's been playing so many minutes during the season. He's been carrying them all year, you know, not really missing any games, even though the team around him has just been crumbling. But it looks like they're going to get um, Jamal Murray back in March. That's going to be a huge uh, benefit for them as they make their playoff push. The matchup is good against Sacramento. He's going up against like Sabonis at the five, so good matchup for Jokic to really uh, put up some nice scores. I like him more than Vooch and Towns, and Sabonis looks good. You can play him at power forward if you wanted to. Uh, but you do have another like bunch of value at center, so it'd probably be like a two-center build. That's why I left power forward blank. Uh, but Aiton looks good without Chris Paul. More usage for him. Capella has been super popular without uh, Collins. He hasn't really done anything crazy. He's just not been getting a lot of shots off. But um, going up against Vooch, I wouldn't mind taking a shot with him at 58. But I would say there's also a couple of guys in the 3K range that look good with 37 for Roby, who's had a huge game last time out. He's probably going to have another decent game today just without Mike Muscala. And uh, they're missing Robinson Earl. So it's basically just him and Favors as the main guys. And I guess Pokovetsky can play the 5 as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put in Watford. They just gave him a little nice extension. Maybe they knew about Nurkic's injury, and they knew that they were going to need him out there. Um, so he got paid a little bit for a guy that wasn't drafted, I believe, and should be starting at center for them. And now Golden State doesn't play a big at all times. Like, they can go with the stretch four at the five, like Bielitsa. So, but I still expect Watford to play at least 20 minutes, probably like 25 or so. And he can be productive, uh, especially just getting some rebounds, getting some easy baskets right around the rim. Um, hopefully he doesn't take some threes. But overall, I would expect him to be a pretty good value pick at almost the bare minimum. And uh, last but not least, looking at the uh, the guard position, you can go down a little bit here to like um, the 3K range I mentioned with Aaron Holiday. He's only $3,700. Looks like a fine option if you wanted to take a shot with somebody else on Phoenix. But I guess my second preferred guy would be like Bridges. It was only 58 He's not super expensive. I'd probably look to him at the forward just because there's some better guards that we can look to. Uh, but that price tag against a team that will turn the ball over for a guy that does rack up some steals on his good nights. I um, think that definitely Bridges, you can look to him as a pretty good value pick, a guy that will play good minutes and has been shooting the ball just really well, and we'll get a lot more shots um, off today. But that's it for the DraftKings rundown. I'm sure we'll get some more changes throughout the day, but you know, going with these six leaves you with like $4,700 left. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at FanDuel now. All right, over on FanDuel, Jokic obviously looks like a great play. We'll start at the point guard position. Uh, you only have one guy at 10,000, which is John Morant. I'd rather probably get down to like Steph Curry a little bit better at 93 compared to his DraftKings tag. Um, he's cheaper than Trey Young. Uh, SGA is 9K. He looks good at that price tag, but I'll probably want to see how he fares in his first game back after missing an extended period of time. Uh, Simons looks a little bit better at 76. Um, and then you do have a lot of value here in the 6K range. 6,000 flat for Cade Cunningham looks ex exceptional. You have a couple of guys that will benefit just by some of the other stars missing. Uh, without Garland, you'll see uh, you'll see Rondo get a nice bump. Uh, probably will start today uh, just because Goodwin hasn't really been doing anything crazy for them. He hasn't even been in the rotation this month. But uh, Rondo at 39 looks great. You also can look to like Holiday if you wanted to look to another guy that's bare minimum on the Phoenix side. At shooting guard, probably will pass on 10-6 for DeRozan. That's just really high price tag. I'd rather go to a Devin Booker at 88. Uh, Zach Levine looks good. At only 79 on Fandle, you have Simons looks good also. At 76, Josh Hart looks similar on both sides. 7K is not crazy. I'm not crazy about it, but I don't. it looks better without Nurkic just in terms of getting more rebounds. Uh, but you do have Cade Cunningham, who I like a lot. 
uh, Clay Thompson, who's not not really on a minutes limit anymore, is like in the 30 range, so definitely can fi uh, fill it up in like 30 minutes or so. And then in your 3 and 4K range here, looking at, you not know, have too much here. Yes, you can look to like uh, Wiggins at 35, but you do have some probably better plays. I'd rather go with Rondo, probably rather go with Aaron Holiday. Uh, small forward, DeRozan, Tatum are your two top end guys. Not sure if I want to or need to get to those guys today. Uh, I like Justice Winslow at $6,700. Uh, you could look to like Bridges at only 55. I think he looks great. Wiggins at only 59. Also looks good. Will Barton at only 54. And then the 4K range, you have Lori Markkinen at only $4,600. I think uh, he's probably going to start as usual. He's been starting before he got hurt. And now they don't have Garland. They don't have Levert. But on DraftKings, it's a little bit tougher to get to him. But on FanDuel at 46, even if he is on a minutes limit, like 25 minutes or so, still think he can be like a very good value pick at that sort of price tag. Uh, just given that they don't have too many other guys. Uh, besides like Kevin Love, who can really shoot the basketball right now, well, at least today without Garland and Levert. Uh, power forward, Sabonis looks fine at 96. He looks better on DraftKings at 9,000. Don't mind getting to one of these Cleveland guys. I'd rather get a Jared Allen than Mobley, just because Jared Allen has had some monster games recently. Some of those have come without Garland, and Detroit's not a very scary matchup at all in the front court, going up against an undersized Isaiah Stewart. But Gordon looks good at $6,100. You can look to Jeremy Grant if you wanted to at 59 But I'd rather get down to Bridges at only 55 I'd rather take a shot on Kevin Love at 54 Roby's a fade at $5,300. Uh, you can look to Markkinen here if you wanted to. That's like your best cheap play. Uh, go ahead and put in, I think Jared Allen looks very good at his price tag. Uh, but I'll put in Bridges again. Just think that $5,500 and $58. There's two cheap price tags with them missing. Um, Chris Paul today. And then at center, I'm going to look to get up to Jokic again on both sides. 11-4, super cheap on FanDuel. He's always been at this price tag, but he typically puts up like 60s, gets up to 70-point upsides, even 80-point upside if he's having a monster game. But I like him more than Vooch, Sabonis, Cat. Cat's tough to get to today with them going up against Steven Adams and with them all being healthy in terms of their big three. Uh, I kind of Actually, I skipped on Trenton Watford. So instead of Bridges, we'll put in Watford at the power forward position. He's only power forward eligible, and he's min price, so he would definitely be a great value pick. But I also do like Bridges a lot at 55. Uh, but that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Best of luck if you enjoyed it. As always, appreciate it. the like button. You can check out the show socials. Are they're all in the description? And I'll see you all next time.